All right, now we're going to do uh, confidence intervals um, for the mean of a sample, the mean or the average. This is part three for confidence interval, working with means. Now, we talked a little bit in a class about this idea of when you're working with means, you usually have your sample mean, and then you also have your um, sample standard deviation. That's S, the sample standard deviation. So you have your mean, you have the sample standard deviation. Now, traditionally, we would like to use the standard deviation of our sampling distribution, which is sigma divided by the square root of n. But the problem is we very rarely ever know the population of the, of the, uh, the standard deviation of the population. It's just not really known. So it makes it hard to use standard deviation. So in turn, we use standard error of the sampling distribution, the standard error of the mean, of the sample mean. And instead of using sigma, we use S, that's our sample's standard deviation. Now, this gives us the um, most accuracy that we can have without knowing sigma. But the problem with this is because of this, we end up having to use the T distribution. And I did briefly talk in class about the T distribution. Um, please remember the T distribution is a lot like the Z model, but it's a little bit shorter and fatter. Or no, I mean not shorter and fatter, it's shorter and wider. It's more spread out. And um, as the sample size increases, the T model starts to look more and more normal to a point where you have a fairly large sample size, your T distribution does look a lot like the Z distribution. But when you're working with means, you should always be using the T distribution. And that's because you're using your sample standard deviation as opposed to the um, true population standard deviation. So it doesn't make anything that much harder. So our formula here for the confidence interval is the mean that you saw. Um, plus or minus the T star times your standard error of your sample mean. So that is right there, of course. This whole back part is still, just like with proportions, is called the margin of error. And um, that hasn't changed. Um, it's just this T star. Now remember, on T star, to find T stars, you have to know your level of confidence and your degrees of freedom. So remember, degrees of freedom is just how we've defined the different T distributions based on sample size. And it's simply your sample size minus one. So if you have a TI-84 calculator, you have the luxury of saying, OK, I want to do an invert T instead of an invert norm to find a T star score. And if I want to be, I don't know, 90% confident, that's a tail probability of 0.05. And then we also have the degrees of freedom. And let's say my sample size was 10, then I'd have 9 degrees of freedom. And that's how you would get your T star. Now, if you don't have a TI-84, then you have to use the T chart. And I gave you guys the T chart in class. And basically what you do on the T chart is you have to look up the appropriate um, Z uh, or the appropriate level of confidence on the bottom with the degrees of freedom on the left and then you can match it up to find your T star. But hopefully you have a TI-84 calculator, don't have to worry about that, but the, using the, um, the, um, the chart is fairly simple actually. Alright, so let's actually do some problems with this. Here we go. A company wishes to know the average length of its batteries in minutes. They analyze a sample of 15 batteries and find the average length of those batteries is 205 minutes with a standard deviation of 28 minutes. So calculate a 96% confidence interval for the true mean. All right, so um, first thing we got to check our conditions in order to use the, uh, the appropriate model here. So we must have a random sample. So I'm assuming that the 15 batteries we chose was a random sample. Um, we need 15 to, uh, excuse me, to be less than 10% of all batteries. So as long as I'm assuming this is a major company of batteries, I'm assuming they have a lot of batteries. So 15 is going to be less than 10% um, of all batteries. And the third condition we have to meet is 15 is big enough. And um, because we're using this new T model, which allows for small samples, it certainly is big enough. So next up, um, we need a mean. Well, the mean of our sample, a sample mean was 205 minutes. We can actually use units here because this is not proportion where it's just decimals. This is actual um, units, so minutes. Um, we have S, our sample standard deviation was 28 minutes. Now from that, we need to calculate the standard error of our sample distribution. Now, a lot of people say, well, isn't it? Don't you just use 28? Well, no. Remember, a sample distribution, the distribution of a 
a sample or the average of a sample will vary less sorry I was messing up my equal sign there will vary less than just any one battery so we would take that 28 and divide it by the square root of 15 so um, taking 28 divided by the square root of 15 we get 7.2296 7.2296 and again that's going to be in minutes as well now um, we also need a T star score and they did ask us to be 96% confident. So I can pull out my TI-84 calculator here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, invert T here. And 96% confident would be 0 0.02 on the tail. 2 on the top, 2 on the bottom. So 0 0.02 on the tail. And I have 14 degrees of freedom. Now, if you don't have a TI-84, you've got to use the chart. You would look up 14 degrees of freedom on the left with 96% confidence at the bottom. And you should get to three decimals, the exact same T-star score. I'm about to get 2.264. So 2.264. And that's it. So i got my conditions. i got my work. Man, this is really easy. Here I go. I'm going to start off with the 205 average that I saw in my sample, but I know that might deviate, so I'm going to add plus or minus the Z star of 2.264 times my standard error of 7.2296. This back number here is going to create the margin of error, so let me calculate that real quick. So 2.2296. Oop, 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 oop. I messed up the two decimals. 2.264, excuse me, times 7.2296 gives me a um, margin of error of 16.3678 minutes. And um, then I'm going to create my interval from this. So let me go up and down. And if I subtract that value, I get about 188. 0.63 minutes, and if I add that value, I get about 221.37 minutes. So I am 96% confident. The true average battery length will be between 188.63 minutes and 221.37 minutes. So make sure you give that nice conclusion like we worked on in class. All right, so um, now if you ask me, that's a pretty wide margin of error. I mean, I, I'm still, you know, if I'm the owner of this company, I really want to know. I'd really like to be a little bit more precise, a little bit more accurate. So one thing I could do is increase my sample size. So um, one question that we could say here is how many batteries should they sample if they want a margin of error of only five minutes here the margin of error was 16 minutes oh my goodness so we want a margin of error of only five minutes how could we what would our sample size have to be well let's remember that margin of error is equal to that t star times your standard error of the sample. Now we actually got a lot to talk about here. This is going to be pretty crazy. Okay. First off, we want the margin of error to be five minutes. Now when you work with proportions, margin of error is a percentage or a proportion. Here it's an actual amount of something. So we want the margin of error to be five, five minutes. Um, for standard error, it's going to be, well, uh, the standard deviation of the sample, but we haven't even done the sample yet, so how do we know that? Well, we do have the previous problem to base our answer on, so because of that, I'm going to use the 28 divided by the square root of n. Now, if I had no idea, the thing with this problem is you, there's no 50-50 you could use like with proportions, so I would have to have some type of value known here in order to do the problem, and I, I do know the 28 from the previous problem. Now, what to do with T star? Here's the issue. T star is all based on your sample size. I haven't even done the sample yet, so how can I possibly figure this out? How can I possibly get a T star when I don't even know my sample size yet? Because remember, T star needs your sample size for degrees of freedom. So what we do here in this case is we actually end up having to use a Z star. Now, could I use the T star from the previous problem, the 2.264? The answer is no, because remember, that was for 14 degrees of freedom. To limit myself to a margin of error of 5, I'm probably going to have to have a much bigger sample, which would change my T star. So, <coughs> excuse me. 
So the best thing to do here is we have to use a Z star. I just don't have a choice. So let's stick with the same level of confidence, 96% confidence. If you look on your chart at infinity, or if you just do an invert norm of 0.02, you're going to get a Z star of 2.054. Um, so that's what I'm going to have to use here, 2.054. I, I just don't have any other choice. Um, so now let's solve this. First thing I'm going to do is divide by the 2.054. Divide by 2.054. So 5 divided by 2.054 gives me uh, about 2.43. That's what I'm going to write down, but I am going to store that number on my calculator. And that equals 28 divided by the square root of n. And do not square everything yet because the square root is only around the n. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root of n, canceling that out. So I get 2.43 uh, 2 times the square root of n equals 28. I then going to divide by the 2.43, divide by the 2.43, and I get the square root of n equals, now on my calculator, I'm going to do 28 divided by x, that was where I stored the 2.43, and I get 11.5024, and now at the very end, I'm going to square that to get rid of the square root, and I get a sample size of about 133 batteries. So notice, to get my margin of error to go nice and low, all the way down to um, five, five minutes instead of the um, huge 16 that was over here, I'm going to have to sample quite a few more batteries, 133 batteries. So hopefully that makes sense. A little bit weird there with having to use Z, and that's only because, I mean, what the heck do I use for T? I don't even know my sample size yet. All right, next problem, a little bit different. I want to show you how to solve one that's set up like this. To determine how much weight someone can lose with a new diet pill, a sample of eight people are given the new pill and report their weight loss after six months. The following is a list of their weight lost in pounds. So we got somebody lost five pounds, seven pounds, somebody gained three. Uh-oh. Somebody lost 12, somebody lost four, somebody gained two again, somebody lost 15, somebody lost eight. So remember, what do I need to get the problem going? I need an average for my sample and I need a standard deviation for my sample. Your calculator can do all of that for you. What I did was I went into stat edit, I put all of those uh, datas into my list, and then from there you can do a calc, one variable stats of list one, and boom, you have everything you need. My average for my sample is 5.75, and my standard deviation is the S. Make sure you're using the S. The sigma is not right. That's the calculator's sad effort to try to find it. So use the S, 6.2278. So my average was negative 5.75. Whoop, 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 that was bad. Negative 5.75. So on average, most people lost weight. And the standard deviation was 6.2278. Now, um, what do I need next? Well, I need a standard error of my sampling distribution, which is going to be lower because the average of a sample should vary less. So 6.2278, and I'm going to divide that by the square root of my sample size, which was 8. And I get 2.2019, and this is all pounds. That was pounds, this was pounds, this was pounds. I want to make sure I have my units here. Okay, pounds, pounds, pounds. All right, now, here we go. All I need is a T star. And let's see here. Ah, I forgot the right how confident to be. So let's just stick with a standard 95% confidence. So let's go ahead here and do an um, uh, invert T here. <coughs> And 95% um, confidence with a tail probability of 0.025 and comma 7 degrees of freedom because I had 8 values, 8 in my sample, so 7 degrees of freedom. And you could also find the same thing on your chart, 2.365. So 2.365, 2.365. All right, so here I go. Now I'm going to start off with my sample average 5.75 plus or minus my t star 2.365 times my standard error um, 2.2019 and remember this back part here is my margin of error so let me calculate my margin of error real quick just to see how far I'd be off so 2.365 times 2.2019 and I get a margin of error of 5.2 2075 pounds, 2075. So now I'm going to make my interval based on that uh, margin of error. I'm going to add it and then subtract it. When I subtract it, I get negative 
0.9575 and the top I get negative 0.5425 so this interval tells me that I'm 95 percent confident that um, the true average weight loss is anywhere from 10.95 pounds lost to uh, 0.54 pounds lost here's the good news if I'm the owner of this new pill the proportion, I'm sorry, the interval shows that you will lose weight, that there will be an average weight loss. Notice both numbers are negative. Both numbers are negative, showing that the loss could be as much as 10 pounds, or it could be as little as a half a pound. But the good news for me is that there will be a average weight loss for a group. So um, I can advertise that on the bottle. I could say that you will lose an average weight with 95% confidence, right? So that's kind of the um, neat thing about these intervals. If this would have been a positive number, then that would show that you could lose weight, meaning a negative, or you could gain weight with a positive. So that obviously wouldn't be something I'd want to um, <coughs> excuse me, advertise on my um, pill bottles. So anyway, um, hopefully these problems make sense. Hopefully you can go all the way back here to the formulas. Hopefully everybody truly does understand why we're using T, and that's because we have to use S, and it just doesn't fit the normal model quite right with small samples only knowing your sample standard deviation. So, all right, guys, that's about it. Um, have a good one, and hope everything made sense. Be prepared to do some problems in class.